Boltworks Today is a viewer-supported show. To learn more on how you can get involved and watch extended ad-free versions of these videos, please visit our website, boltworkstoday.com, and click on the top of the heading where it says support this show. Thank you. What is going on, everybody? I hope you are all having a great weekend. My name is Andy with Boltworks Today, and for this week, I wanted to post a video that I had originally put up over on Patreon talking about uh, dust collection, dust containment, and just overall health and shop safety kind of a thing. So with winter unofficially here, I thought that would be a perfect time because people are going to be start bringing their projects into their garages or into some other you know type of enclosed area. And I just thought that this would be timing-wise a really good video to put out and just kind of share some little bit of information. So I hope you enjoy the video and I will see you again very soon. So over the weekend, I've gotten a lot of emails and questions from people asking about my dust collection system, and specifically about the, the type of sander and the vacuum and the like suction type setup thing that I use. And rather than replying individually, I thought it'd be a lot more helpful for everybody if I just put together a video kind of explaining everything and how my, my thoughts and in, in, in how I manage this has evolved a little bit over the years. So um, I'm just going to jump right into it. So the, the, for the sander that I use, it's a, uh, both the, well, both the sander and the vacuum that I use are made by Fein. Uh, that's F-E-I-N, it's a German company. Um, but they're made by Fein. And this is a, uh, this is a six inch sander, you know, and it's got the little hook up here for the dust collection thing, which I'll be talking more about that here in a minute. But as far as the, mo but as far as the model number, it's the MSF636-1. And let's see, this particular one was made back in 2013. Now, when I first started, I, I was just using, a, you know, like a standard uh, big box five inch sander. Um, and they work well, they do. Um, a lot of the times they tend to, to lack your dust collection and they just don't have a very aggressive movement on the head. You know, the, the more aggressive that the head movement is, the faster you're gonna be removing material. So, you know, so I, I, I burned through probably four or five of the little, you know, five, you know, five inch sanders, everything from like Porter Cable to DeWalt to, you know, you name it. And they just, they lasted maybe three, four months and then they just kind of crapped out on you. So then I decided, all right, well, let me, let me look at a little bit bigger model, something that's, that's designed more so around dust collection. And so I, I came across this brand, the Fine, and I ordered it. And it was, it was kind of a tough pill to swallow. I mean, they, this sander, I, I don't know what it goes for now, uh, but I, at the time, I think it was like around 650 bucks. But, you know, reading through their literature, they said, you know, it's, it's a very aggressive sander. It's got, you know, which is gonna save you time, actual hands-on time on a project. Um, it was designed around the whole idea of, of dust collection. And, you know, they, they hit all the, all the selling points for me. So I ordered it and I, I will say these things, this sander is built like a tank. I mean, there, I, I, I have no qualms about the quality as far as like, the motor and the brushes and, and everything else. Uh, on my last hand, this is the second sander, this is the second fine sander that I've had uh, since I made that switch back probably 12 years ago. So this is one, I'd say this is my most used tool in the shop is the sander. I mean, that's about, it seems to be about what 90% of what I do is some form or shape of sanding. So, uh, so for each sander, the way that I use it uh, to last five, six years, that's, that's pretty good. That's saying a lot about the, the, the quality of the tool. And it seems to be the, the, the only thing that, that would wear out on it is, was the Velcro padding. I mean, because when you're sanding, the pad gets hot, the little Velcro stuff on here kind of melts and it, it starts to lose its stickiness. So after a while, you'd be sitting there sanding and all of a sudden, phew, you just got a disc that goes airborne because it flew off the, off the sanding head. But, you know, that, that's, I, I don't know that I can fault the, the, the sander, you know, for that. Now, I'm, I've got more to come back and say about this, but let me move on. All right, so now, so now as far as the, the actual vacuum setup, that's you know, these two, uh, two systems here. Uh, the, the vacuum that I use, again, is made by Fine. I, I wanted to keep, I, I've just got this thing. I like to keep like with like. So if I have a, you know, X brand sander, I want an X brand vacuum, you know, just to kind of keep some uh, uniformity across uh, brands. It's not that I'm all hung up on having everything the same color, but it, I can't explain it. But anyways, 
So the, uh, the, the vacuum itself, again, is made by Fine. It's their Turbo One. It's, they have larger units, but I just got the smaller one. And uh, it, I'll tell you, this, for a little vacuum like this, you know, it's kind of the, the, that cliche joke, but this thing really sucks. I mean, but, it, but in a good way. It's a, it's a powerful little unit. It's got, you know, the onboard uh, outlets for, for tools, auto on and off for when you turn the tool on and off. Um, I have no complaints about this. This is actually a pretty solid little unit. And then uh, I have this attached up to this. Now, this was something that I just added to the, added to the arsenal here about four years ago, three, four years ago. And this is a, it's, uh, it's made by Oneida Air Systems, but it's their dust deputy. And I will say, it, initially it just sounded like such a gimmick. I just, I didn't, it, I looked at this thing for two years before. I'm like, all right, I'll, I'll give it a shot. Because, I mean, it's not cheap. I want to say this, uh, this can with the, uh, the separator here. Um, this is about 180 bucks, give or take. And... I, I don't know, but the problem that I was having, the, what, I, I, let me back up a little bit. So what really pushed me to, to start looking at something like this, which is basically it's a, it's a cyclone separator, was the fact that sanding fiberglass and, and dust and wood uh, creates a lot of dust. So I was, I was going through filters on this vacuum like crazy. I mean, this, I have a HEPA filter in here, and I would get an hour of sanding, and the, the, fil the, the filter itself would be so clogged, you weren't getting airflow, your, your uh, suction dropped way down, and then all of a sudden you weren't collecting dust from the, from the sander. It was just kind of piling all around and just making a hell of a mess. So these bags, if you've got to replace them two, three times a day, that gets really expensive. So, you know, kind of justified the cost. I'm like, well, you know, if it'll save, if it can make a bag last a week, that also, almost right there justifies the cost of this uh, cyclone separator. So, so I got it, and uh, first time I had it hooked up backwards, <laughs> it didn't work very well. But then after I figured it out, you know, I was just basically I, I had these two hoses swapped around. So, um, but after I got it figured out, this thing it, it's a, it's a little champ. I mean, it really is. It uh, metal container. I think this is a 10 gallon container and just a, a plastic little separator here. Now, they do make a, a metal one, uh, but at the time, I didn't want to order the metal one because it was more money, and I still, I, I wasn't sure how well it was gonna actually work. Now, looking back, high insight, um, you know, I, I say that I wish I would've ordered the metal version, but that being said, I abused the crap out of this thing, and I, it's, it's never cracked, it's fallen over, it's been tipped, it, has been, it, ha it hasn't been dropped but it's been you know, tipped over and, and uh, used heavily. Not a single crack, nothing. I mean, so nothing, nothing has ever happened to it, but you know, it, it is still plastic. But that said, never had an issue with it. Now, as far as what this thing actually did performance-wise, uh, I went from going through at least a bag per day on the vacuum to, you know, I'll, I'll fill this t container up uh, probably two or three times before I have to empty the filter in the in the vacuum. So, how long does that last? At least a month. So, big, big, big difference. You know, this is 10 gallons. So, I mean, you think about how long it, it would take to fill up 10 gallons worth of very, very fine dust. Uh, that's a lot of sanding. So, you know, right off the bat, it, it just it paid for itself in the first week, and it's been it's it's been flawless ever since. So, if you uh, if you've got a project going on and you're going to have to have be doing a lot of sanding, this is a it's a little bit of an investment, but this is a very very good thing to have. Again, if nothing else, it's just going to save you on 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 filters on filters filter bags, and if you've got a larger project, you know obviously that that's going to add up pretty quick. All right, so let's get back to the sander. Now, so far, everything I've had to say has been pretty positive, pretty much about everything. And, and for the most part, it is, except when, there, when it comes to the sander, there is one, one thing that just absolutely drives me up the wall. And I don't understand how this passed their design department as like an okay uh, way to approach this, but the but the problem isn't 
isn't how the sander handles the dust or how it, how it collects it, that's great. That's not a problem. Uh, it's not the, the motor. Motor's solid. Everything, construction-wise, is solid on this thing. What drives me crazy is how you're supposed to attach this to this. And all they use is this cheap little rubber, you know, kind of a union thing. You know, and that's it. And as you can see, I, I've had to put a hose clamp on here because this would continually pop off of the sander and then you see your hose and everything goes flopping. Or the hose pops right off the, right off the other end of this union. When you're up on top of a boat and your sander and everything else is down on the ground level and you've got gravity pulling your hose when you're trying to work, this thing is constantly popping off and it drives me insane. I've thrown more than my fair share of things across the shop just because of this one thing. Absolutely drives me crazy. Now, when it, when it comes time to replace this, you know, because eventually this is going to die. It's mechanical, it's, it's a, a wear item. Eventually it's going to die. Uh, I honestly, I don't think I'm going to get another fine sander. Um, for the price point, they're right on, right on par with uh, some uh, one or two other brands that just manage this in a much better way. And the, the, the brand that, that's popping into my mind right now is Festool. Um, yes, they're another high-end tool company, and their sanders are six, seven hundred dollars and for the, for the large one, you know, the one that I'd be looking at. They make smaller ones as well, but anything that's green uh, or Festool green is, is going to be expensive. But I've learned one thing over the years is that, you know, when it comes to tools like this, for the most part, you do get what you pay for. And you know, if it's a, an item that you're not going to use very often, well, no, it just, then it doesn't make sense. But if it's, if it's something that you, you're going to be using quite a bit, absolutely, it's worth every penny. Every penny. So the reason I'd be looking at the Festool is, well, one, they have a, a proven track record as far as the quality of their tools and their, their support and customer service and everything else. But the part that really it attracts me to their, to their sanding uh, lineup is the fact that the way that they designed all this. You know, on Festool, for one, the hose, it actually locks it's, and snaps in place. It can't just pop out. It locks and snaps in place. And I believe the hose actually comes out from underneath the body. So when you're looking at the footprint of this, having this hose come off the side, you know, it, it restricts how, how tight you can get into something with, on this side of the sander. You have to rotate it around, and then there you go. It just popped right off. Whereas on, the fest, whereas on a Festool, I believe the hose locks in and snaps right off the back, but it's directly under the body. So you don't have, so you're, ab you're able to take this side of the sander and get it right up to whatever edge that you're trying to sand, you know, that you're working on. And just the fact that it snaps in place, it, it never pops off. It never, ever pops off. So I would like to say that this is a sponsored thing, but it is unfortunately not. <laughs> Um, not by Festool or by Fine or by Oneida. I mean, it's just, it, it's not. So, anyways, uh, so that's, that's my setup. And uh, one thing I, I will stress, regardless of what kind of setup you use or you're looking at or, you know, regardless of all that, uh, I will say that when you're, when you're doing the type of work that's involved with working on boats, you're working with fiberglass and, and sanding different fairing compounds and, and all that stuff, uh, dust collection, is extremely, extremely important. Much more so, well, I would say it's as important as actually wearing a respirator while you're doing your sanding. Because the, the, the whole uh, you know, I, idea that I've you know, slowly uh, wrapped my mind around when, you, when doing this kind of work is that, yes, you, know, you can wear your respirator while you're doing your work, but there's times where you're in, around, working around in either in your garage or your shop where you're not wearing your respirator. You know, whether it's an hour or, uh, or two after you just got done doing some sanding, or it's the following day. 
The more that you can collect the dust right immediately at the source, the less it's going to be floating around in the air and specifically settling on the ground or on the boat. If it settles on the ground, you go walking, you kick that back up. So, so you come in the next day, you figure, well, I haven't done any sanding, so you're still walking around the shop, you know, doing whatever, you don't have your respirator on, you're still kicking this stuff up in the air and, and breathing it in. So dust collection right at, the, right at the source is extremely, extremely important. And that's something, I, again, that I've become more wise to than now I'm getting older and, and I have, uh, have a few more mouths to feed. So I want to make sure that I'm around for as long as I can be. So um, when, you're, when you're looking at a project, seriously put a healthy budget uh, or at least a healthy amount of consideration to how you're actually going to manage that. I mean, realistically because it is extremely, extremely important. Is, screwing around with fiberglass dust is not something you want to take lightly. So, um, so I guess that's it. I, uh, I'm just going to wrap this one up. I'm not going to mumble on it too long, but I, hopefully this answers a lot of questions, and I'm sure there, are, there will be more to, to follow. So if you have any questions, uh, please leave those down below, and I will be sure to get back with you. And yeah, until next time, hope, have a great week, and I will see you again it's almost December. I got flies going around the shop. <laughs> but anyways, have a great week, and I will see you again very soon. Thanks for watching. This has been a Boatworks Today Protection.